It's TGI Friday. Anybody else glad that this is <laughs> wrapping it up for the week? Yes, get the weekend ahead. And what a weekend it is going to be. I am on the road, leaving on the road here soon, and will be remote for the next week and a bit. So we'll be more pre-recorded than normal, but I do have my little field kit with me in case we have to break in. We will do so. All right. So this morning, we talked about the early bird this morning yesterday. That's the Mercury sextile Saturn. That one's already over by the time you're listening to this. It has already happened, but you are living in the strength of that aspect right now. That will be strong today for sure. Then we have a new moon Friday going on to 11.53 this morning in Taurus. You can celebrate that new moon, take a little extra lunch break, and howl. No, don't howl at the new moon. Howl at the full moon. And I was reminded, too, that I did not howl at the last full moon. I will certainly try to remember to do that. Somebody remind me, please. In two weeks, the coyote was distracted by the eclipse. But new moon today, and thank goodness, because that kind of starts to separate that business that we were talking about, the moon transiting between Jupiter and the sun. We're going to shift a lot of this party out of Taurus into Gemini. So all of a sudden, as of Sunday, things become dual. But for today, Taurus, as we have the new moon just before noon Eastern time, and then at 247, the moon leaves Taurus and enters Gemini to go pave the way for the sun, which comes in Sunday morning very early. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing some money manifesting. Are you kidding? Jupiter, the North Node, Mercury, a new moon, Uranus, surprises, surprise me happily, surprise me in a good way, surprise me with avalanches of abundance. And Jupiter, make it big. In fact, you know, right now, with the sun in there, is probably the best time to set your money intentions for the year. Do it today and tomorrow, because Sunday, it's a Gemini sun. So let's catch this last little part of the amplified Taurian energy in the as the sun is leaving. Let's close the door with this powerful, okay, this is what this Jupiter in Taurus transit is going to look like for me. You've got a blank check from the universe sitting on your desk. You have your quill pen in hand. Fill it in carefully. I would say really spend some time with this. Think about the whole year ahead. You have Jupiter in Taurus, the sun setting up at the end of the sign, bracketing Jupiter's at the beginning, the sun is at the end. This is the imprint of what's going to happen over the next year. Set your intentions, define them clearly, write them out, maybe even do Napoleon Hill's little trick of put them in a card and put them in your purse or your wallet or on your bathroom mirror or someplace where you can refer to them. This is that big. This is the whole deal of really the message of this podcast needs to be setting these intentions clearly before the sun leaves for Gemini. I think you get the message. It is super powerful. Now, Another little log you could add to the fire is tomorrow morning. See, this would be a good time this weekend to set your alarm and catch these things as they're happening. So the first alarm would be 11.53 a.m. Eastern Time or your time zone equivalent. The next one would be tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time or your equivalent when Mars leaves cancer where it was not so happy for Leo, where it can bask in the sun and fire again. Mars is going, oh, so nice to be warm. I don't know why it is, but that symbolism of Leo just reminds me of Florida. I don't know. And I'm leaving for Florida in a day or two. So, uh, yeah, that's a perfect analogy of fire on fire. And, of course, then Saturday night, we've got the big aspect exact. We've been talking about it all week. It's been in the oven the whole time. But as of 11-12 Saturday night, Mars will be officially opposite Pluto. The exactness of that one not quite as specific or important because Pluto moves so slowly. It's like this big rock on the other side of the chart, right? Mars has been dancing toward it, but now it finally gets to kiss it right on the lips. Now, when I'm talking about Mars moving into Leo's fire, I'm talking about that from those of us in the perspective of living on our highest timeline. But for the mundane, this is a very difficult aspect. 
This could be for somebody who is not or who is running from the kinds of things that Pluto would like to transform. Boy, it's got the ultimate power to level the blow. One of the studies I've been doing recently in my little financial market stuff is studying about the algorithms that drive all the trading. It's all computerized, and it is all so precise, and it's all driven by these monster computers located in different places and different companies around the world. It's algorithm computer program driven. And one of the things about those algorithms is they can see all time frames at the same time. I mean, it's obvious that the computers they use to take your money <laughs> are much bigger and more sophisticated even than the Defense Department's computers. I mean, these are super, super computers. And they can see every little window, every perspective, every different time frame. To me, that's the same eyes that Pluto has. Pluto has eyes on all of it and can do its work and interject and interact where it's needed, as it's needed, in every little minute situation to bring about transformation. Well, that's happening tomorrow night at 11.12 Eastern Time. Then early in the morning at 3.09 a.m., the sun moves into Gemini. Now we start to have that plurality that we'll talk about more next week. And right there tomorrow morning, just about 10 o'clock in the morning, the sun trines Pluto. So we've had now all of the outer planets in on this action. Remember the sun crossed over, conjoined Uranus a couple of weeks ago, and now we've brought in Saturn and Neptune and Pluto and everybody out there, all of the big theme builders have been fully engaged. This is why you've been feeling what you've been feeling. And I'll tell you, I'm recording this several days prior to this because I had to in order to get ahead of these episodes before my trip. I honestly, I have no idea what's going to have happened by now. But if we need to, we will talk about it in the moment. It's just the astrology right now is just so amazing. Next week, it does start to thin out. And then, as we mentioned, answering that question on Wednesday by the end of the month and into the first of June, it's a different picture. Uh, you still have some challenges, but it is at least a different picture. So I hope this sets you up well for the weekend. The big thing today is to work on that money intention and relationship intention. I mean, all things Taurus, right? Wherever you are in that spectrum, I think everybody could use a little extra love and a little extra money, right? So frame that up and then we'll switch into the duality of Gemini. All right, you guys have a great rest of the weekend. I will be back with Ray. I'm planning on being back with Ray tomorrow. And then we'll go full full on recorded through next week. See you guys. Have a great Friday. Bye.